So I'm gonna settle this bacon debate once and for all. Hey guys, it's Amanda. So I love food. Anyone who knows me or has been watching the channel knows that. And actually, just the other day, I had the most amazing ham sandwich. Mm. I know what you're thinking. Why? Why was it so amazing? Well, let me tell you, because of this magical spread known as Branston pickle. It was delicious. I can't believe it's taken me so long to try it, and now I want to eat it on literally everything. So what is your favorite thing to have it on or with? Let me know. Anyway, today I'm going to be watching popular foods that are different in the US compared to other places. And I wonder what is gonna be on here. But have you ever visited the US or any country, ordered food, got it, and it definitely wasn't what you were expecting? Let me know in the comments. Well, greetings, food lovers. There's nothing better than some pigs in a blanket on game day, chips on the side, and a big apple pie for dessert, eh? Now, whether you're American or not, could decide how you just imagined all those fun foods I mentioned. And wait, there's more! Check out some other popular dishes in the US that look different around the world. 1. Pancakes Let's say you're an American tourist in Russia. You wake up and you're craving a big stack of fluffy pancakes smothered in butter and syrup. Ooh, that hits the spot! You ask for a menu in English, scan it for your morning treasure, and boom! There it is! Pancakes! I'll have that, please. The waiter brings your breakfast out, you look down, and you're stunned to see what looks like wimpy, paper-thin French crepes on your plate. Hey, man, what gives? Well, pancakes date back to ancient Greece and Rome. Before they were officially dubbed pancakes in America, they used to be called Indian cakes. Crepes, on the other hand, have nothing to do with pancakes in terms of origin, since they date back to the 13th century France. Kind of gives you the crepes, huh? <laughs> Number 2. Toast To be fair, they're both really nice, but they're not the same thing. Like, like when I think pancakes, I know this is obviously the American speaking to me, but when I think of pancakes, I think of the fluffy, oh, warm pancakes with syrup, and you can put strawberries and bananas, maybe even a little bit of Nutella. More. But then saying that, everything I just said, you can put inside a crepe. So, they're both good. Doesn't matter, does it? Until it can go in either. <laughs> now, speaking of breakfast, when it comes to toast, my, do the French have an imagination. American toast is just a toasted piece of bread. Of course, you gotta throw some butter and jelly on that bad boy. But if you've ever had French toast, well, you know it's a sweet delight of white bread soaked in a mixture of beaten eggs, milk, sugar, vanilla, and cinnamon. I guess that's why they don't need those big, thick pancakes in France. And I imagine they don't call it French toast over there. And if you keep goofing this up, then I imagine you're toast. 3. Pigs in a Blanket all right, it's football Sunday, and you've rolled some mini hot dogs up in dough and threw them in the oven. If the game you're watching includes big dudes in helmets and pads throwing an almond-shaped ball around, and you refer to your game day snack as pigs in a blanket, you must be American. If you're in the UK, that dish would involve wrapping hot dogs in bacon, and that football you're watching would be what we call soccer in the US. Now, here's where it gets trippy. The equivalent of American pigs in a blanket is called a sausage roll in the UK. Yankees call the British variety bacon-wrapped hot dogs. Boy, that just sucks all the fun right out of it, doesn't it? Bacon Number 4. Bacon <laughs> Ah, Since we've touched on the topic of bacon, let's get that straight too. Bacon in the US comes from the pig's belly and is served in thin, crispy strips coated with fat. In the UK, bacon is from the pig's back, and it's less fatty, thicker, chewy, and served in round slices. It's kind of like what Americans refer to as Canadian bacon, or maybe a combination of the US and Canadian types. So, if you're from the UK and you're having a hard time finding some proper bacon in the US, 
Maybe ask for the Canadian variety, eh? So I'm going to settle this bacon debate once and for all. Bacon sandwich? British bacon all the way. It's thicker. Like I said, it's chewier. It's not crunchy, so it's better in a sandwich. With some ketchup, delicious. Now, if you're having it as a side, say with some eggs or with pancakes or French toast, whatever you like, crispy American bacon, you cannot go wrong. It's true. Saying that, I know I said this in another video, but if you cook bacon, if you like crispy bacon, get the streaky bacon, put it in a cold oven, on a pan obviously, not just in a pack, put it on a pan, turn the heat all the way up, about 15 minutes, depending on your oven, you have crispy bacon. It is delicious. You can thank me later. Number five, pudding. Now, my fellow Americans will imagine a creamy custard dessert when they think of pudding. If you were to travel to the UK, you'd get something way different. The British definition of pudding is anything that's been boiled in something else. For example, in the UK and Ireland, they have the infamous black pudding that's served for breakfast. It's also called, wait for it, blood sausage. Really? Well, that just ends it for me right there. They also have sweet puddings, but that would be the cake-like dish we call flan in the US. Flan in the UK, however, is what Americans know as fruit pie. Huh, how confusing! Well, as Shakespeare might have said, a pie by any other name would taste as sweet. Except for that blood sausage thing. Number 6. Eggs Okay, eggs are eggs no matter where you go in the world. I'll take mine scrambled, please. But the thing is, stores in Europe don't keep them refrigerated like they do in the US. America does it for safety reasons. The Department of Agriculture determined that the most effective way to fight salmonella is by refrigerating eggs. But that doesn't mean European countries don't take their own safety precautions to fight bacterial food poisoning. In some parts of Europe, they leave the original coating on the eggs. There's an original coating? And that coating protects them from contamination. In other parts, they vaccinate hens to keep the eggs disease-free. Number 7. Breadstick You'll laugh, but I did actually wonder when I moved here, because in the US, pretty much all eggs are white. Like, white, white. Um, so when I moved here, I was like, oh, they're all brown. I honestly had no idea that it had to do with like the cleaning process and stuff. I just thought it was <laughs> like such a thicko. I just thought it was like different chickens and things like that. Idiot! It's the cleaning process. We just do things a bit differently. Six. I'm sure you know we have the Italians to thank for this tasty Mediterranean treat. However, when it comes to the original breadsticks, also known as Grissini, the food migration game didn't go as planned. You see, when we ask for breadsticks in an American restaurant, we get soft pieces of doughy bread and garlic that we can dip in sauce. But if you were having lunch in an Italian restaurant and ask for breadsticks, you'd actually get the original version of Grissini, crispy baked breadsticks that can accompany your salad or be crunched on as a snack on its own. Number 8. Ketchup Now ketchup is another one of those culinary items that got lost in translation. In America, you know that familiar red paste made from tomato, vinegar, sugar, and all the accompanying spices. However, if you go to Australia and ask for ketchup on your burger, the waiter might give you a funny look and say, you mean tomato sauce? This goes back 80 years ago when ketchup hadn't made its way to Australia yet, and they used to serve tomato sauce as a condiment instead. Now, even though ketchup has made its way to Australia, it hasn't changed in terms of language. And while we're here, don't even get me started on that whole ketchup versus catsup deal. 9. Chips One of the most traditional dishes in the UK is fish and chips. But if you're an American and you didn't know better, you'd imagine someone eating fish and a handful of Lay's or Doritos. But what they call chips are what Americans know as French fries. On the flip side, in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, 
What we call chips, the round thing sold in half-empty bags, they call crisps. As for the French part of the American naming, that goes way back to the 1800s or even earlier, when potatoes, not necessarily the sticks we know today, were fried, quote, in the French manner, end quote. <laughs> French fried back then was pretty much what we call deep fried today. Number 10. Cookies The American understanding of cookie comes from the Dutch word kutje, which means small cake. And when you think about it, that's pretty much what cookies are. Only, maybe they're a little crunchier. But in most English-speaking countries, except for Canada, cookies are called biscuits. In fact, they only use the term cookies to describe the chocolate chip ones in particular. As for those fluffy little rolls Americans know as biscuits, those are called scones elsewhere. Now here's my question. What do they call the sweet biscuit hybrid we know as scones in America? Hmm. Number 11. They're all cookies. They'll always all be cookies. I cannot help it. That's one thing that I have not changed. They're cookies. They're all cookies. I get that biscuits are crunchier. Well, I think that's what the difference, biggest difference is, but I still say it. I think I will say it until the end of days. Whether it's a chocolate chip cookie, a macadamia nut cookie, whatever. They're all cookies. <laughs> On a related point, as an American, I smother my biscuits, not cookies or scones, in butter and jelly. If you're in the UK, you're probably imagining me hopelessly trying to spread some jello on my bread. Because for you, jelly is my jello and my jelly is your jam. Ow, my brain. Of course, we have jam in the US, but it usually has chunks of fruit in it, unlike smooth, creamy jelly. So, travelers, beware. This kind of mix up could end up putting you in a jam, which in this context means a tough spot. Oh, my head is spinning. Number 12. Pie. Now, back to desserts. Hmm, I could go on and on about pie. Pumpkin, apple, blueberry, cherry… <clears throat> anyway, pies in some parts of the world aren't the sweet, fruity, round pastries we know and love in the US. In Greece, for example, pies are savory and the dough isn't as fluffy. They can be made with cheese, spinach, mushrooms, and even some meat. Those kinds are also popular in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Ghana, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe, to name a few. Mm -hmm. Number 13. Milky Way Bars Alright, I know your stomach is growling up a storm by now, so here's our final example of a familiar food that might throw you a surprise if you eat it abroad. If you love American Milky Ways, Wait until you try the European version. It's also made of chocolate and nougat, of course, but it doesn't have that layer of caramel in it. I imagine Milky Way bars in Europe taste pretty similar to the Three Musketeer bars we have in the US. And if you're curious, it got the name Milky Way because it can float in a glass of milk. Really? Yeah, go try it. I'll wait. No. All right, Brightsiders, I'd say it's time for lunch. What do you think? So. I actually really enjoyed that video. It took me back to when I first moved here and I'd go to restaurants or I'd just be out or talking to friends about food in general. And I would be, I would muck it up. I would, especially the French fries, the crisps, the chips. To be fair, I still mess that up. But luckily, as British people <laughs> are very intelligent, they know what I mean. And obviously I have my mouth and I'm American, so they're like, oh yeah. I, we know what you mean. <laughs> no, but I did really enjoy that. And there are so many differences with food. But again, that is what makes visiting or living in other countries so much fun. Were there any that you would add? So just let me know. Either from the US that you thought were crazy weird or another country. Because I love hearing from you guys. Because now I'm about off to make myself a brand pickle sandwich because I'm absolutely <laughs> starving after watching that. But as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, smash that like button if that's what you're into, 
and I'll see you in the next video. Afro, dirty, dentist, kiss, 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 hair, messy, colors, now, ha, ha, ha.